Have you been told that you should walk to improve your bone health? And what about running and jumping? Maybe you've heard that you shouldn't run anymore if you have osteoporosis, or that you should because it builds bone. <laughs> and what about jumping? You may have seen rebounders being sold to help you create impact stress that's supposed to be good for your bones. Today, we're gonna discuss walking, running, and jumping for bone health. We'll look at what scientific studies say about each of these exercises and talk about whether or not each of these exercises are actually good for your bones. Hey, I'm Sarah and I'm a yoga teacher with training that's specific to osteoporosis and yoga, as well as being a BoneFit certified fitness instructor. And I'm also a nutritional health coach through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. I am really glad to have you join me on your journey to better bone health. And on that note, let's begin our discussion today talking about walking. Walking is a really interesting topic. Some people love to walk. It feels good in their bodies. And they get some time in the sunshine every day, which is a good way to get some vitamin D for your body. For other people, walking can seem treacherous. They might be afraid that they'll trip and fall on uneven ground, which could lead to a fracture. Or perhaps they have pain in their feet or another issue that makes walking difficult. Often doctors tell osteoporosis patients that walking is a good source of exercise for them. So is walking good for bone health? In premenopausal women, brisk walking for at least half an hour, three to four days per week, helps to maintain bone mineral density. In postmenopausal women, studies show that brisk, relatively fast walking most days of the week for a considerable distance, picture one to two miles here, and also with consistency, meaning that it takes a while to make a difference, like six months to a year. That this kind of walking helps to improve bone health in the legs and at the hip. It doesn't make any kind of a measurable difference for the spine. So walking can help the hips and legs, but it needs to be done quickly, most days of the week, and for a significant distance, like one to two miles each day. It won't benefit the spine. Walking is a form of balance, and regular walking will help you to improve your balance and to reduce your risk of having a fall and a fracture. If you want to use walking to also improve things for your spine, then you might try walking with a weighted vest or even a backpack that has some books in it. Make sure that you have really good posture while you walk with added weight. This is because it's important to make sure that with the added weight that you aren't coming into a rounding with your spine and aggravating posture. We want to do this with really good posture. Also, don't be discouraged if you're, if you're not currently a fast walker. If you want to use walking for better bone health, start from wherever you are now. And then as you walk consistently, you'll gradually get stronger and also faster. It might take longer than if you're already a fast walker, but that's okay. This is not a race, but instead an opportunity to work from wherever you are right now. Each of our bone health journeys are individual, and we all need to go at the pace that's right for us. Walking quickly takes us right into the subject of running. So you may have heard that running is good for bones, and you may also have heard that you should avoid running with osteoporosis. So if you were to actually do a Google search about running for osteoporosis, you would likely come up with both kinds of answers. So let's unpack this a bit. Running can be a good way to build bones and to maintain bones prior to developing osteoporosis, but with osteoporosis, it's much more nuanced. If you're a person who's always been a runner, it's probably okay to keep running. If you haven't been a runner, it may not be a great idea to take up running with osteoporosis. Running can be a high impact exercise. The impact is good for our hips and our legs, but if you have osteoporosis in your spine, then the impact has the potential to cause a compression fracture. If you've had compression fractures, running is not a generally advisable activity. There are always exceptions, but we're talking about the general. 
So there are recent studies that show that high impact exercises can actually be beneficial for people with osteoporosis. But it's important to keep in mind that high impact exercises are not appropriate for everyone. So if you have been doing high impact exercises and you like running and you want to use it for bone building, then it's important to vary your path. Just like with weight training, where you have to gradually increase the amount of weight that you use to keep increasing your muscle mass so that the muscle mass pulls on your bones. With running, we need to do things that will also increase our muscle mass. This is best accomplished by running both up and down hills and on trails. This helps to keep things fresh and helps to make for an ongoing challenge for our leg muscles. Continuing to increase muscle mass that can pull on our bones is an ongoing goal in order to continue improving bone health. As long as we want to have healthy bones, we need to work on building strength. This example with running up and down hills and varying the way that our leg muscles work is applicable to actually all forms of exercise that we do to improve bone health. This means that it's important to vary the kind of exercise that we do and to do multiple types of exercise to keep our muscles challenged and continually working. So I'm a yoga girl and I love doing yoga in a very particular way that helps to build bone but I also enjoy walking and regularly go for walks with my husband. I also lift weights throughout the week. Engaging in a variety of different types of bone building exercises gives my muscles an ongoing challenge and it will yours too. This might look a little bit different for everyone. You might prefer to go to the gym as your main form of exercise, or you might want to avoid it altogether. It's all good. What's important is finding your own path for doing weight-bearing exercises that are osteoporosis safe and personally appealing to you. And then mix things up to keep your muscles strong and your bones healthy. So let's talk about jumping in osteoporosis. I often get asked about jumping and rebounders that are marketed as being good for bone health. After discussing the effects of high impact exercises and osteoporosis, I'll bet you can even guess what I have to say about this activity. Here goes anyway. There are several studies about jumping and bone health, and they show really positive effects for our bones that come from jumping daily over a period of several months. Here's the thing. The studies tested women who were under the age of 50 and premenopausal. So yes, jumping can build bone, but it isn't something that's generally recommended for people who already have osteoporosis. Jumping has high impact, and that has the potential to lead to compression fractures in the spine. The impact is going to be good for our legs and our hips. In this way, jumping is similar to running. With rebounders, and jumping, there's the potential to fall off the rebounder and to potentially get hurt. I know many of them have handles, and yes, that's going to help to make it safer, but there's still the unnecessary risk involved in jumping, and I don't generally recommend it with osteoporosis. So bottom line is that there are a lot of good options for engaging in weight-bearing exercises that are safe for osteoporosis. And I encourage you to find exercises that you enjoy doing that are weight-bearing and will help you to build bone. Walking has benefits for bone health as part of a balanced practice and for getting your vitamin D from the sun. Fast walking for half an hour to 45 minutes is also good for our hips and our legs. Running, while not appropriate for everyone, has the potential to be good for our bones. It is important to vary your route and to run and to go both up and down hills and along trails. Jumping is a way to build bone, but it's generally better to do it as a preventative measure for osteoporosis rather than a corrective one. I hope that you find this information beneficial. And if you do, please share it with someone that you know and love. 
And if you'd like to check out the studies that I refer to in this video, they're listed in the description for this video. And there are quite a few studies on these topics and they're actually quite interesting. So I encourage you to check them out. Dive into these resources for yourself. And on that note, I look forward to talking with you soon.